Apple CEO Tim Cook is in Singapore. He visited a school that serves students with disabilities. Mr. Cook spoke exclusively with CNA 938's Daniel Martin at the event, explaining how and why technology changes the way that people with disabilities can learn. I see it accelerating their learning ability, and it makes my heart sing to see it in action. We, from the very beginning of a design of a product, we focus on accessibility. We want to have our products be used by people that are blind or people that are deaf or people with motor skill issues or whatever differently abled skills they may have. And it makes my heart sing to see it in action. I do think that the intersection of a great teacher, which you saw here, and great technology, which you saw, really promotes an acceleration of learning that is hard to see in any other way. And we have Daniel here with us and also Yap Fung Kai. He's acting head of program for information, communication and technology and assistive technology at the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Singapore School East. Welcome to you both, gentlemen. It's good to see you. Thank you. Hi. So, Daniel, we heard, just heard there your interview with Tim Cook today. What stood out to you? I got a chance to speak to him after he interacted one-on-one -on -one with students at CPAST. And you could see straight away that he really saw the power of technology to give voice to people that need the voice. The first thing he said to me is, technology can really accelerate learning in people with disabilities. And he saw that, he literally just saw that 20 seconds before he spoke to me. And I think one of the things that really stuck out for me is he said that it's more than the technology alone, it's the intersection between the technology and the teachers. Mm. The teacher has to bring out the best in the student through the tools that the technology gives them, whether it's about assistive touch or whether it's about a student that is having difficulty interacting with the screen. I love that he recognized that human tech interface. Yeah, it, you can have the technology, but you've got to be able to have somebody show how it can be applied as well. It's so important, isn't it, Dan? To bring it out of the student. Exactly. Yeah. Funkai, let's bring you in on the conversation mm. here. Uh, tell us about what learning challenges children actually face in this realm and how technology is changing their lives. All right, so to bring a bit of context, most of our kids in our school has uh, physical motor challenges. So because of that, they can't really access things that we take for granted. For example, telling your mom what you want to buy for breakfast in the morning, uh, taking the bus, uh, going to the playground to play, that's a big one. And even going out or just being in the community doing what other people do. Yeah. So the technology really helps to increase the level of participation access to these activities, sometimes in a very different way. So, for example, they could, instead of going up to the whiteboard to write, to show what they have learned, they could do it on the device, cast it onto the screen, and then let everybody see what they have been yeah. doing. It's the participation that is the right. key here, because isn't it? if they it? didn't have that, yeah. they wouldn't have anything to say. They wouldn't exactly. be able to say anything. Yeah. yeah. So you brought, brought in some assistive technology, I mean, some, some adaptive uh, devices with you here today, Fung Kai. Yes, Can I you just did. briefly explain to us how they yes. might be used? Yes, I did. So I, I'm going to show you guys one of the ways my students use the iPad. This is, they're going to use this feature called Switch Control. So it's called, basically I have this uh, switch interface that's Bluetooth connected to the device. There is a switch that we mount and we can actually mount this part to any part of the body where the child is able to move. So for example, if they can't use the hand, they can use the chin and things like that. So I'm going to use my finger for today. Uh, I'm going to do a very simple demonstration. So I'm going to shift this circle over here to do a Mickey Mouse. This is something that uh, some of the kids take a long time to do. Mm. So basically how it works is that when I press the button, you see this thing starts moving, right? I'm basically trying to pan and try to scan. So I'm trying to first select this. So you think about if you want to bring this in, you're going to move your finger and bring it over to this side. All right. So I'm going to wait so for it to scan. It's sort of trying to triangulate exactly yes, where the, the sense of touch that's, is. That's, a to okay. that's totally what's going to happen. And now I'm going to use some of the gestures mm. to physically drag. So I'm going to find that gesture right now. Hang on. Over here. So you see how it starts scanning bit by bit. So I'm going to gestures, go into the next line. I'm going to go hold and drag. So once I'm hold and drag, I just drag it to the point where I want it to be. 
There you go. And when I'm done, it will start dragging it in. Right. So, so the sensitivity and the, the sensitivity is there, and the of course, that is Mickey Mouse. Yes. So to be clear, this piece here, the, the orange portion here, it can be manipulated with any part of the body that is any part of the body. Some a chin, yes. it could be a shoulder, it could be an elbow. Yes. And just to share, right. this is actually three D printed in our school, Fantastic. just for our kids. I'll give you an example of we take for granted yeah. moving things around. Yeah. These are some of the images that the children were able to create from assistive or uh, technologies like this. This particular donut, this mm. young girl named Rochelle, yeah. took two weeks to make oh. that. She's a quadriplegic, yeah. she has quadriplegic cerebral palsy. It takes two weeks of doing that to create this beautiful donut with pink frosting and rainbow sprinkles. They converted it into stickers. They handed it to Tim Cook. They were so happy to hand it to him at the beginning of the segment. They handed me one, and I've got one for Dawn as well. Oh, I decided to thank pass you. one to Dawn, so now you have one as well. That's fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful artwork as well. What a sense of accomplishment for the kids. Yes. So we can go really far with this technology. It has, it has applications. It, it, it gives kids this ability to be able to accomplish perhaps things that they never thought they could before. Uh, Daniel, you know, you again, you met those kids, yes. uh, you saw them, uh, you know, sort of using that uh, technology. How much further do you think we can go with, oh. with what's available? It opens so many doors. I think we're just scratching the tip of it. I give you an example. One of the youngsters I met, uh, Aloysius Gan, he's a para athlete in a wonderful sport called Bocha. And he, his face beamed when he was able to show Tim Cook a video he had made. The video showed his personality, his character. He had helped script it, cut it together and edit it. I think the idea of them being able to participate in social media, in advocacy through being YouTubers or TikTokers or talking about their disabilities and their experiences is a form of advocacy. So I think technology helping them to participate in mainstream opportunities is going to help normalize difference. Yeah, and what an opportunity as well to be able to do that for Tim Cook. You should have seen his yeah. face. He couldn't wait to play that video. He really couldn't. What an opportunity. Funkai, I'm struck by all of this because obviously these kids, they progress to, yeah. you know, young adulthood. And, you know, their sort of aspirations, they change as well. Tell us something about how the technology can sort of work in that process as well, to sort of move them from, from the aspirations that they may have when they're younger to when they're a bit older? I think essentially the opportunity gives them, the technology gives the opportunity to really expand their options, yeah. help them really access more activities, help them grow, help them learn, and help them participate in society. And I think through that, opportunities may open up for them to use the tech to work in a totally different way like what? Yeah. They'll say in social media, in the virtual space, yeah. it's actually a platform for them to really move towards mm. despite all the physical challenges. And it's something that is, you know, more accessible as compared to the mainstream work like working in the office and things like that. Because let's bear in mind, a lot of them may not have the ability to travel yes. to the workplace and may require a work from home opportunity. And if mm -hmm. they could work digitally and remotely, it opens up employment opportunities. <laughs> Daniel, in your interaction with the kids today, did they talk more about, you know, the opportunities that they had than the many challenges they probably do face? That is such a spot on comment to make. Not once did they talk to me about, oh, it took me so long to make this. Oh, it was so difficult. There's this one lovely girl, Rochelle, who has to operate. She has quadriplegic cerebral palsy, has to operate by sipping and puffing on a straw that's connected to her device. It looked to me like such effort. She never once talked about it. She was more interested to show me her design. Yeah. So I think that's what shines through with this kind of access to technology. They're more excited by what they can do than by how difficult it is to us. Well, they're an inspiration to all of us. Gentlemen, thank you so much thank for coming you so into much. the studio this thank evening you. to talk about this. Yap Fung Kai there from the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Singapore mm. and our very own CNA 938 presenter, Daniel Martin. Thank you to you both. Thank you so much.